since school, okay? Uh, school doesn't teach you how to think. School never was there to educate you. School is there to indoctrinate you. It's propaganda, indoctrination. It's like an uh, e e economical boot camp, indoctrination pen for, for livestock. Uh, it's, it's a training ground. It's not education. Education involves a practice of questioning and, and arriving at your own answers through your questions and then creating more questions from those answers and, and using and employing logic, which is questions, answers, more questions, more. At school, it's not about that. It's about them posing a pseudo question, which really is a setup prompt. It's not a question, it's a setup prompt. Um, a setup prompt for a correct answer or a correct response. So really, schools, it's not about questions and answers, it's more about cues and correct responses. So what's the cue? What's the question today? Here's the question, here's the setup prompt, the cue. Uh, the correct answer or the appropriate response that we want from you, so we can give you an A plus and call you the best and brightest, is this. Now, in your own words, please, in your own way, rewrite the same information, the same facts, the same answer, the same appropriate uh, response in your own way. Do it in your own way, in your own unique. And it's like, wow, cool, awesome. So we have this ability, we are allowed to have freedom and independence uh, to change the superficial aspects of our answers. Just the superficial aesthetics, how we word it, in our own words. But as long as we're regurgitating and echoing and uh, replaying the same, uh, arriving at the same conclusion, pretty much, saying the same thing in principle, just like I said before, the difference between appearances and what's going on underneath. School, all they teach you is to create this illusion of independent thought, of being intelligent, the brightest and the best and brightest of your class, because you're so good at rearranging the same established facts that have been propagated and indoctrinated underneath all that superficial freedom. You know what I mean? So they're not actually... Uh, if, if you're challenging too much and you disagree with things and you've got good logic, they'll send you to a doctor and shut down your right brain by giving you legalized speed slash dexamphetamines and say you've got a problem. Um, attention, de you know, attention deficit disorder is because of people that are too aware and they're so bored by these very obvious linear... It's like it's like a game. When you play a game, it's like... People typically don't like playing video games where it's... Um, a goes to point B, goes to point C. People like open world. People like to just explore and do what they want and go here and go there and tie together this experience in their own way. And they don't like to be just navigated like through a movie and you're just clicking away from scene to scene. But that's exactly what it's like in school. So people that don't like that, people that are more engaging and they want to look at the whole field of information and connect dots and explore new avenues and keep things exciting instead of just being indoctrinated with the same fucking thing every day, at the same hour, the same class. You know what I mean? Obviously, for, the, for these kinds of people that need more than just being indoctrinated, they need to be engaged, they need to be thinking. But we're not going too much into that. The point is that, that there is this mentality that we've been trained to adopt and it's been conditioned furthermore into us as adults now. We're seeing this now. Where people literally think that if you just repeat the, the supreme established authority of unquestionable fact, if you just repeat what's on the board, the correct answer, then that somehow makes you better and brighter than everyone else. And if you're a theorist, if you research, if you're not closed-minded on a topic, if you're not just resolved on a fact and you're actually furthering this investigation, then you're crazy, you're stupid, you're a tinfoil hat wearer, like, it's, it's a bad thing. And this is where I, 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 I gotta say that to me, facts are more dangerous. Especially when you gotta start thinking, where are those facts coming from? Are we arriving at these facts ourselves? Obviously, like, I punch myself in the face, it fucking hurts. I would call that a fact. But that's a fact that I've arrived at at my own conclusion, because I've experienced that kind of pain before. But certain other facts that people are rubbing in my face, I've never personally identified the data for. I've never personally seen the experience, the evidence for. And I get the impression a lot of the time that these other people also haven't experienced firsthand the evidence for. But somehow, just like it's gospel, 
like science and supreme established authority of unquestionable fact that's proliferated through mainstream media, um, to them it just seems like that's just that's the truth. Accept it blindly. To question it, to theorize openly that there could be more, that there could be a big picture, that there could be something missed out, that there could be something in, even inaccurate, not intentionally missed out, but inaccurately depicted. Even to suggest any of that, anything else that doesn't say it's a closed case, put it in the file and lock it away, uh, that's dangerous. It's more safe to let these people print out the facts and for us just to shut our mouths and accept it. You know the word, uh, you know, conspiracy exists for a reason. There's a law against conspiracy in America. Um, freedom of speech is a big part to make sure that, you know, keeping uh, governments in check and from falling into tyranny too much. Uh, you know, because these things have happened, you know. Keeping in mind conspiracy is just when two or more people come together that have, have a plan to advance themselves at the expense of other people. I mean, that's a that's a conspiracy. And the world, we're, like Ike says, we're, we're drowning in conspiracies. Because the world is full of people advancing their agendas in secret in ways that, you know, we don't always know about, not every single detail, that's at the expense of someone else. This has been revealed through declassified documents, through public apologies on television, through court hearings, found guilty. Uh, conspiracies are real. Theorizing itself, because um, obviously when people say conspiracy theorists is a bad thing, like it's a buzzword that propaganda has taught people to use. Um, that CIA told people to use back when Kennedy was assassinated and people grew suspicious. And so the CIA went to the, the group of psychologists and social engineers and said, how can we counteract people's, you know, people saying, oh, something weird's going on. Somebody set it off. Somebody killed Kennedy. How do we stop that from happening? We want to silence those people. Um, so they said, okay, well, let's just call anyone that questions the established account, the public narrative, the public relation narrative. Anyone that questions it, just call them conspiracy theorists. Just discredit them, make, make them seem paranoid and irrational, and use that, we, we, we thrust that term out there so much that people would just be like, oh, this is another conspiracy. And that's, that still lives on today, as pointed out, you know what I mean? To me, a conspiracy theorist is much better than a conspiracy denialist, one who just literally swallows the facts from these trusted printers of fact, um, and doesn't question it, because that's what a theory is. Facts change, by the way. This is why I say they're more dangerous. Facts should be open to changing, whether we're talking scientific facts, whether we're talking about a diagnosis that's giving, about something being healthy, and then years later, once there's been type of data to compile, it is then discovered that these, that diagnosis was wrong or highly inaccurate, and it uh, turns out that fact should be revised. Happens all the time. Facts are dangerous because facts simply means we never really have all the facts. We never really have an absolute 100%. Most of the time, we don't. 100% absolute, airtight understanding of every single fucking detail of how something works, of how something is. But the second, we, and the way people are today, the second we so easily, the second we so easily accept something as fact, without further question, without further thought, and we just lock it away, and we close the case, and put the box on it, and shut the box, that is so dangerous. You know, especially if the people presenting the facts uh, aren't really being honest and they've got their own vested interests and they're not telling you every single fucking thing that they discuss in their, in their boardrooms. Like, as if you're getting in, let, let in on everything 100%. And this isn't about people being evil, talking in secret, trying to undermine humanity. Um, no, it's about business. It's about business mentality. It's about business logic, which we should know business and, and corporations and industry doesn't care for life, doesn't value livestock, even in talking about animals, we are accounts as livestock, you are on the, li the livestock exchange, you have a trajectory figure of how much money you're worth and how much you're trajected to make in your life as livestock owned by the commonwealth, okay, uh, they, you know, we are numbers and statistics and this is not secret, shouldn't be a secret or surprise, I mean that's what social engineering was about back in the 20s, was about Back, you know, back in the day, people used to be special tradesmen, and, and people would be well sought out for their specialty, because they're specialized in something. And then in the 20s, the social engineering movement, and David Rockefeller, which Bill's in love with, um, and modeled his foundation onto Bill, into Rockefeller's vision, and he was a huge eugenicist, by the way. Uh, Rockefeller put in millions into the social engineering movement, and studying, researching how to control people, they did experiments on babies, on rats, 
in mazes. They figured out at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter if you give people hope, if you get people angry going against the government, as long as you can predict their actions and uh, you can manage those actions and it falls into controlled compartments and parameters that you've designated, then it's fine. Even if people disagree with government and they're expressing it, what matters more is action because more often than not, people say a lot of things, but they generally move in patterns and they keep doing the same thing regardless. So they research heavily on how this works. I'm just make sure this is still going. They research heavily how this works, the patterns that we form, how to control and dictate and prime to put cues in us. So even, for example, conspiracy theorists or new age people who, who think they're beyond everything, they would plant certain people and certain information, disinformation for the conspiracy theorists, for those other people to throw them off because at least um, they can control that. At least they can control that even if they create this perception of uh, an anti-government figure. At least that anti-government figure is actually on the government's side. You know what I mean? It's like a parent that says to the child who's like 16 or 15, look, if you're going to have sex, uh, I prefer you do it in the safety of home than going out to a park and, and possibly endangering yourselves. It's the same thing. It's like, okay, if this bad thing's going to happen, if people are going to talk anyway, if people are going to grow curious, let's have control over the situation and we decide what things they're going to be curious about. We decide what rabbit holes they're going to go down. So there's a lot of that. And so it's easy for conspiracy theorists to sometimes go overboard. People that theorize about conspiracies, which I remind you is, is a good thing to do, as opposed to closing your mind on the facts, as, a, as opposed to closing your mind on the facts and saying, all right, that's it, and then everything else is just in the shadow. No one's going to be none the wiser. And assuming and you pray that the facts are 100% correct, um, it's far safer, far less dangerous and toxic to simply question, explore, theorize, get a bigger picture view, just to make sure. So um, this is part one. This is part one. I'm going to do a part two. Uh, I've decided to break it down because that might be easier. But so far we've, we've covered the coalition mentality. We've covered um, confirmation bias. Okay. Uh, one more thing I want to touch on is cognitive dissonance because that kind of ties in with everything. Okay. Cognitive dissonance uh, is when you experience information that contradicts your beliefs or expectations. When you experience uh, something that contradicts your belief or expectations, it gives your brain, like, it discombobulates you, and it gives your brain, like, a disconnect. And they call this in psychology cognitive dissonance. It's a state, it's a state of dissonance. It's not, it's not resonant or consonant, as they call it. There's three ways to achieve cognitive consonance, which is your normal, healthy, balanced state of mind. When you experience new information, like, let's say, um, you don't believe in aliens, and, but then you see a UFO, okay, and it's like, whoa! And your brain enters a state of like, what the fuck? Because it's confused, basically. It's utter confusion. That's what dissonance is. There's three ways to resolve that confusion. One way is to accept the new information and incorporate that information and then adapt. And, 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 and you know, and you'll pretty much say, oh, wow. So I guess, I guess aliens and, and UFOs do exist. Holy shit, I learned something new today. Wow. The other way is to uh, reject it. So you can accept the information or you can reject it and you can be like, oh, no, no, that, that's not real. I've just, I've just had too much to drink and somebody must have put something in my glass or something. Um, or you can repress it. And this typically happens when people experience something so overwhelming and shocking and surprising, like, I'm just going for a walk in the park. Oh, fuck, I'm being raped next minute. And it's so shocking and so unexpected that they repress that experience. Okay, they, they can't possibly process it. They can't justify and accept it and they can't reject it. They can't even process it enough to reject it. So they just repress it and it becomes this tangled mess of unprocessed color and emotion and thought and fear and feeling or just, and it's just repressed. So you see, you see this response online. Um, this goes in line with you know, because I've set the stage already talking about how when people enter a room based on the likes and the laughs and the loves and the angry faces, that creates like this this kind of coalition mentality environment. It's like, what's the appropriate response? What is the more normalized way to react here? What's acceptable here? 
Um, that's part of it, okay? And it's easy for people to get into this fight, 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 circle jerk, okay? This high school mentality stacks on when there's few people who are trying to research um, and just and just give open information. It's easy for people to do that because they, when they experience dissonance, when they, there's somebody giving information that's different to what they believe or expect, um, and it confuses them, they don't understand it, and they say fear and confusion go hand in hand, and people express that through anger, right? Anger is one response, and that's the fight response. You've also got the victim mentality, which is the flight response, because fight and flight and is pretty much goes hand in hand with. Cog uh, cognitive uh, dissonance, the whole entire accept or reject or repress. Rejecting something uh, is like the fight response, all right? Um, and repressing something is like the victim response. It's the fear response of like, no, I'm not going to read that article. I'm not even going to listen to this. I'm going to completely ignore it. I'm going to completely just escape. I'm going to be an escaper. It's going to keep my head on the sand. I only think positive not give in to the fear mongering, but then I'm going to watch the news and get so exhausted with that. I'm not going to have time to listen to people fear mongering. So that's the flight response, fight or flight. When people experience this information that contradicts what they want to believe. And it's also confirmation bias working here. And also coalition mentality because everyone's on board these days, challenging people that simply like to theorize and think openly and expansively instead of just, nope, here's the facts printed off by these trusted printers of fact. So, um, what am I talking about? What am I talking about? What am I talking about? Kind of, there's a few different things I want to go into, and I'm trying to keep it all together. It's written down. It's written down. What was I just talking fight or flight? The other one is fight. So you see people abusing. You see people literally not reading or listening or watching anything that's shared, and they're just shutting people down and just name calling, undermining. Um, so that's the flight response, the, the, the fight response. The fight response just wants to dominate, it just wants to abuse you. The flight response wants to avoid you, escape you, or, or even play the victim and say, oh, it's not fair what you're doing, this is dangerous what you're doing, fuck you for your disinformation, you're somehow victimizing everyone else. You're somehow doing something wrong. That's the flight response. The fight response is those that just say, you're a fucking retard, you're a tinfoil hat wearer. They give you that, that, that gif of people applauding, the smiley emojis. That's the fight response. And I think it's, it's important to understand that, yes, we will get triggered sometimes to be fight or flight. We will be triggered with information that challenges our view, gives cognitive dissonance. We can choose to accept the information, reject it, repress it, ignore it, okay? Uh, we will be swayed by this natural desire to conform to the room that we're entering and the people that we, you know, and to, to hide our different views. But that doesn't mean that we have to accept that as our limitation and, and not try to strive beyond that limitation. It doesn't mean we have to settle for that. We don't have to be reactive. We don't have to listen to this programming, to this natural tendency that propaganda and these experts for decades have mastered the ability to manipulate. We don't have to, uh, when they push a button here and they set off a certain cue, we don't have to follow what we've been primed to do and give the desired response. We don't have to, when they give a pseudo question or a prompt to state the correct answer, we don't have to say what's on the board. And that's one thing. People that take the information off the board, people that take the information printed by CDC, by WHO, by those with the best in interest in these industries that are uh, actually going to benefit from this, and, and you know the people that are actually putting initiatives forward, when they are the 